third graders, we're going to do another lesson on determining the central message. You're going to need your stories, the crow and the pitcher, and the boy who went to the north wind. So grab those and let's get started. All right, I want you to think back to what does central message mean? We've been doing a lot of practice with this one. If you said that central message is the lesson or the moral of the story that the author wants the reader to learn, then you're correct. It also means that it is the big picture about a life lesson. And central means the message is for everybody, not just the characters in the story. So that brings us to today's learning target. Today we will determine the central message of a fable by using the key details from the text. So we're going to practice together to find the central message of the crow and the pitcher. So make sure you have yours out. We're going to do a close reading on this. So during the first read, we're just going to read the story to see what the story is about. The Second time we read, we're going to look for the character, a character, or if there's more than one, the characters who have a problem. And we're going to see what happens to that character. The third time we read, we're going to look for the lesson that the character learns. Usually this happens toward the end. And then we're going to decide what can we learn for our lives from that character. And we're going to use the information to fill in on or we're going to fill in the graphic organizer with the information from the story. And remember, a graphic organizer is something that you can see that helps you organize the thoughts in your head onto paper. So that's why we call it a graphic organizer. Okay, follow along with me as I read. Remember, we're looking for details on, in the story that will help us determine what the central message is. The crow and the pitcher. And by the way, a picture is this um, thing at the bottom of the screen or at the story um, that holds juice or water or something to drink out of. Okay, it was a hot summer day and Crow was very thirsty. I must find some water soon or I will die. She flew from place to place but saw no water. It had not rained in a long time and the land was very dry. There was no water in the creek bed. There was no water in the pond. There was not even any water in the horse's trough. And a trough is um, where uh, animals like cows and horses drink out of. That's where they get their water. Where am I going to find something, something to drink, moaned Crow. As she flew over a town, she noticed a large pitcher sitting on a table under a tree. I wonder if there is water in that pitcher, she thought. Crow swooped down and landed on the table. She peered into the pitcher. Yes, there was water in it. Oh no, she cawed. There is only a little bit of water at the bottom. The thirsty bird tried to reach the water, but the neck of the pitcher was too small. She tried to tip the pitcher on its side so she could drink water as it spilled out, but it was too heavy. She was just wasting her time. I must think of a way to get to that water, she cawed. Crow thought and thought. As she thought, she looked around. She noticed a pile of pebbles in the garden. This gave her an idea. One by one, she picked up the pebbles and dropped them into the pitcher. Slowly, the water rose to the pitcher's brim. Now, the crow was able to drink until her thirst was gone. All right, so let's look at the key details that can help us figure out what the central message of the story is. So we need to find, first of all, what the problem of the story is and we notice that crow um, has looked all over to find something to drink and finally she found water in a pitcher so we can underline um, in the text where we found that answer and i found one here that says she noticed a large pitcher sitting on a table and yes, there was water in it. So we're going to add that. A, ver a thirsty crow found a pitcher with very little water at the bottom. So now we know that crow found water. However, how is she going to get the water so that she can drink it because she can't reach it? So she was thinking and thinking and she tried everything. She tried to tip the pitcher. She tried, um, but it was too heavy. 
She also tried to reach the water, but the neck of the pitcher was too small. And she said to herself, I think I must, I must think of a way to get to that water. And then she realized, oh, maybe if she put pebbles into the pitcher, the water level will rise. So we know that the crow tried many ways to get pitcher out of the water, or to get water out of the pitcher. And finally, she came up with the idea of dropping several pebbles into the pitcher and it raised the water level so that she can drink it. So those are the three main key details that can help us determine the central message. So if we think about, okay, well, what did Crow learn from this? We know that she kept trying. She kept trying different ways to get water. So in order to make it a central message for us, what can we learn from this, from this story? And our central message is, um, with the sentence starter, the central message of the crow and the pitcher is, when you are in a difficult situation, keep trying until you succeed. That means until you are able to get done what you wanted to do. All right, so let's pause this video. I want you to make sure that you fill out your graphic organizer with this information. And when you're done, um, push uh, play and we'll continue on your assignment for today. Okay, so now it's your turn to practice. You're going to need the story, The Boy Who Went to the North Wind. So onlineers, if you have not yet picked up your red folder, um, because this story is in your red folder, you can click on the link in Schoology and open the story up there because I'm attaching it to the assignment. So you're gonna read the, um, do a close read with the boy who went to the North Wind. Just read it once to find out what the story is about. During your second read, you're gonna look for the problem and the important events that follow the problem. And then the third read, figure out how the story ends and what lesson does the character learn. So remember, the key detail number one is usually the problem that the character encounters. The second detail is something important after the problem is presented. And then the third detail is at the end, the lesson that the character learns in the story. So then when you're finished with all those details, take that information and figure out what lesson we can learn for our lives from um, learning about what happened to the character in the story. And that will be your central message. And remember, your central message sentence needs to start with, in the story, the boy who went to the North Wind, the central message is. Okay, boys and girls, good luck. And onlineers, don't forget to fill this out in Schoology as well so I can see how you're doing. All right, we'll see you next time. So our review of today's lesson, Today we've determined how to find the central message of a fable by using the key details in a text. If you have any trouble, let me know. Uh, good job, boys and girls. Keep up the good work.